so I want to say that I grew up listening to you, but that's not true because we're the same age. I just watched a lot of Rugrats and a lot of Powerpuff Girls when I was in my 20s. But there are people who did grow up listening to you and you having the voice of their childhood. And now they have kids who are watching Gabby's Dollhouse. What's it like to be a part of entertaining multiple generations? (laughs) It's really special when I go to Comic-Cons the number one thing people say to me is thank you for my childhood. (laughs) So animation is this beautiful world that brings families together and helps people be seen because, you know, it is the most inclusive world ever. Characters are every color of the rainbow. They come from all sorts of different places. Um, They, for the most part, um, with children's animation in particular, teach about inclusion and friendship and um, that it's okay to make mistakes and how to work together. And there's a lot of humor. There's a lot of um, enough, not adult in the, in terms of adult humor, but there's enough humor that an adult can watch with a kid like Gabby's Dollhouse and still be quite entertained. And um, I think it's very special to be part of this universe that touches lives all over the world. And I, um, I'm pretty, I feel very, Um, grateful to have been able to voice so many characters that have touched so many people over the years, really, I do. So you mentioned your experience going to cons, and I know you've always been a big friend to the con community, and that's one of the things over the last year that was really breaking my heart, was that so many events had to be canceled or turned virtual, and I know now that you've been able to do in-person events again, what has that been like for you? Well, I just went to my very first since COVID this past weekend in San Antonio, and it was really wonderful to get back in front of the fans because the truth is in animation, um, the success of an actor is highly dependent on the fans. If the fans don't like someone, they're pretty verbal on the internet (laughs) and they let you know, and the same as they let you know when they really love someone and that's important to us. And I don't know that my predecessors knew how beloved they really were before the internet. And so getting to go to the cons and give back in that way is very special and meeting people in person and seeing their eyes and hearing their stories of how various characters got them through challenging times in their life and how grateful they are and giving back that gratitude for recognizing that character is really, really, really nice. You know, it's not quite back yet because, you know, I was behind like a partition and you can't give hugs yet. And, you know, that was a whole other part of the experience was when someone who is, you know, telling me like Raven, I, I thought I was all alone until I met Twilight on My Little Pony or whatever it is crying and then being able to hug them and they're like, you're so nice. (laughs) Like that kind of exchange is really sweet, but um, hopefully they'll continue to do more. And at this stage in our world, um, I did feel pretty safe. So um, yeah, hopefully I'll be doing a lot more because I miss them too. They're a lot of fun. It's why I created the, um, I have a podcast with Greg Sipes that really celebrates cosplay artists. It's called The Ship It Show. And um, cosplay in general has grown exponentially over COVID because a lot of these artists are home and creating. And so it's sort of nice to celebrate them in a, in a virtual way too. Awesome. Thank you. I'm looking forward to hugs in person again too, for sure. Mm-hmm. 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 So you voice so many very cute, very sweet characters that mm-hmm. it seems like Gabby's Dollhouse was the perfect vehicle for you anyway. But I did want to ask about another character you did recently that was pretty, um, blew me away and just... Did you expect everything with Miss Minutes to become quite as big as it did? (laughs) Not a chance. First of all, I didn't even know what it was when I was auditioning. It was all top secret. And secondly, it's scary to introduce a new character into a pre-existing, well-loved world. (laughs) I mean, Loki is a beloved character. The MCU is one of the most successful, enticing franchises that there is in the world. And so to bring in a new character, to bring in an animated character through an already existing fantastic world is always scary. And it could have gone either way. The fans could have been like, why is there an animated clock (laughs) next to Loki? (laughs) But um, they instantly loved her and took her in. And I'm so grateful. I, it's like this, 
gift I didn't know I ordered that I keep getting to open and there's more surprises and more yumminess inside. It's really, really special how much people love her and how huge she got so quickly. Um, and I personally think Loki is like one of the best MCU TV shows that ever was. So it's very exciting for me to be a part of it. And um, I, you know, I'm so grateful to the fans for loving her. She's, she's pretty special. She was my favorite from the very yeah. first moment she was on screen. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thanks. I always love hearing stories about voiceover artists who interact with fans outside of situations like cons or something like that, where you see somebody wearing a shirt or holding a toy that's related to a character that you portray. Do you ever interact with those people in voice, surprise them? or do you, And if you do, do you have a favorite story about one of those fan moments that was unexpected? <laughs> Um, well, you know, I definitely often get recognized at like GameStop, you know, so the kid at the counter is like, um, your turn is strong. <laughs> so I'll have to throw them a little Harley or whatever I think they're into. Probably my very favorite story is one that happened about a month ago. And to be fair, people are masked, but a gentleman and his girlfriend or wife were walking past me and they were wearing Loki t-shirts from the TVA. And I said, hey, y'all, I love your t-shirts. And they went, thanks. <laughs> and didn't really know it was me. And it was just so hilarious because they just kept walking. And I'm like, hmm, if they only knew the girl behind the mask was really missing it. It was a pretty funny I, story. <laughs> I need to think that they found that out later and are like, just. I did, I did tweet about it. So maybe they, maybe they. Oh, perfect. I hope they found out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.